The ongoing Epic Games vs. Apple court battle has been a long time coming. What started with Apple removing Fortnite from the App Store has grown to an avalanche of big reveals and new information. These are the most mind-blowing courtroom drama-worthy moments so far. These days, it seems every entertainment brand has its own proprietary platform. Just as television networks and movie studios have streaming services, game publishers have digital distribution programs. Epic Games threw its hat into that already crowded ring with the Epic Games Store, and the company thought it could outprofit the competition by investing some serious money in its platform. All that one Epic Games was a sizable hole in its wallet. The Epic Games Store has two claims to fame, or infamy depending on how you look at things free games and exclusives. Epic Games has spent a pretty penny on both. According to Epic Games vs. Apple Court documents, Epic spent $1.4 million on Subnautica to give the game away for free. The storefront went on to offer hundreds of other titles for free, including Alien Isolation, Grand Theft Auto V, and Star Wars Battlefront II, which resulted in 5 million new accounts and a deficit of $11.9 million. That's a gotta hurt! <laughs> It's gotta hurt! <coughs> By the estimates of the Washington Post, the Epic Games Store cost Epic Games $359 million from 2018 to 2019. According to GameSpot, even in 2021, the platform has yet to turn a profit. But Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney claimed the store has been profitable, at least in terms of popularity and clout. If you're going to make an expensive omelette, you need to break a few costly eggs. Judge Ivan Gonzalez Rogers said the quiet part out loud during the second day of court proceedings in the Epic vs. Apple trial. Addie Robertson, a senior reporter at The Verge, covered court proceedings and explained the exchange on her Twitter account. Robertson explained that one of the biggest issues of the day involved a demographic that typically plays Fortnite. That's right, the screaming younger Fortnite fans, the same ones who chased megastar streamer Ninja away from the game, were at the heart of Day 2's proceedings. Like the community of these little f kids is just so dumb. It really is, man. It's not fun. As established previously, Epic wanted a way for players to purchase V-Bucks on iOS platforms without going through Apple first. Judge Rogers asked, isn't that a responsible way to deal with a young client base? Why should we want them to have the ability to just impulse buy something? Tim Sweeney claimed that providing a way for players to easily purchase V-Bucks was part of Epic's plan to provide customer convenience. According to a report from 9to5Mac, Sweeney also admitted that if Apple had offered a special deal to Epic, the company would have taken it, even if it wasn't offered to other developers. The ability to offer V-Bucks easily without going through the Apple App Store seemingly outweighed the possible issue of children being able to easily spend real-world dollars. Most of the gaming industry is open to the idea of freely letting gamers play with others regardless of platform via cross-play. But according to Epic Games' court documents, Sony only wanted to engage in that practice if they could profit from it. A collection of emails as well as testimonies from Tim Sweeney revealed that Epic Games worked long and hard to add cross-play functionality to the PlayStation 4 version of Fortnite. Sony adamantly clung to its initial refusal, but Epic's vice president Joe Kreiner offered marketing data that demonstrated cross-play would be a win-win. He even offered to, quote, make Sony look like heroes. Sony's response? Money, please! My money. Okay, not literally, but that was the gist of it. According to Sweeney, Sony forced Epic to pay a cross-play fee as part of its cross-platform revenue share policy. Any publisher that wanted the feature on a PS4 port had to pay the price, and the bigger the player base, the steeper the fee. While Sony was an equal opportunity cross-play expense charger, it was also the only one, as far as Sweeney knows. Apple initially removed Fortnite from its App Store because it didn't like the idea of gamers purchasing V-Bucks in iOS versions of the game without going through the Apple App Store first. Google followed suit because the game bypassed the Google Play Store as well. This one-two pincer attack has apparently left Epic Games distrustful of services owned by other companies, including streaming services such as Microsoft's xCloud. During the ongoing Epic Games vs. Apple proceedings, Epic released a 321-page document, part of which revealed that the company intentionally refused to release Fortnite on xCloud. While the game is available on the streaming service NVIDIA GeForce Now, Epic skipped over xCloud because the company viewed the platform as a form of competition. 
The Verge postulated that while xCloud itself is unrelated to Apple and the ongoing lawsuit, Epic's decision is inextricably linked to both since Microsoft, quote, doesn't currently allow rival game stores on Xbox or xCloud. Remember, Fortnite was kicked off the Apple App Store and Google Play Store because it offered a built-in rival game store. So Epic Games might have taken that as a cue to avoid other platforms with similar outlooks, including xCloud. Since Epic Games is willing to take Apple to court over the iOS version of Fortnite, you might think that a ton of money is on the line. That is actually not the case. Sort of. The port was profitable, but it wasn't the most profitable version of Fortnite out there. Turns out many audiences would rather play the game on consoles, and you know what they say, with great player bases comes great profit. While Epic Games earned over $700 million from the iOS version of Fortnite via CNET, The Verge revealed that the PlayStation is where the V-Bucks are at. According to court documents, the iOS port's millions of dollars worth of profits made up a paltry 7% of the game's total revenue. 18.7% came from the collective forces of Android, Nintendo Switch, and PC versions, while the Xbox One raked in 27.5%. That means the PS4 was the true cash cow of Fortnite, accounting for a whopping 46.8% of the game's profits. That was just from March 2018 to July 2020. A recent court document stated that in 2020, the iOS port of Fortnite drew in even less profit. But lost profit in the hundreds of millions is still lost profit in the hundreds of millions, even if it is a comparable drop in the bucket. On May 3rd, the Epic Games vs. Apple trial officially started, but since the world hasn't quite recovered from the COVID-19 pandemic, it was held remotely. Unfortunately, many companies and organizations still haven't gotten used to the technology necessary for remote calls, courts included. This resulted in a conference call that was initially auditory anarchy, which is never conducive to a proper trial. As reported by The Verge, the proceedings provided a public call line. In an ideal world, this would have offered a one-way line for callers to hear the proceedings. Instead, trial participants were slammed with callers adding their own two cents. This unwanted interruption derailed the trial significantly. A one-minute sample saved for posterity by Twitter user Nicolas Rivero provides a glimpse into the chaos, which included people saying stuff like, Court clerks needed 15 minutes to mute the Fortnite fans so the trial could begin as intended. But for those 15 insane minutes, the digital court was transformed into a court of public opinion that was weighing overwhelmingly in favor of Epic Games. On March 26th, Microsoft finally gave audiences the news they had wanted for years. No, Scalebound wasn't uncancelled. Xbox owners could finally play free-to-play games without an Xbox Live Gold subscription. That meant players could play Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, and you guessed it, Fortnite without a monthly fee. Given recent developments and documents in the Epic Games vs. Apple case, audiences might have the ongoing lawsuit to thank. Well, the catalyst for the lawsuit, anyway. Recently, sites like Kotaku and The Verge unveiled a telling email conversation between Tim Sweeney and Executive Vice President of Gaming at Microsoft, Phil Spencer. Way back in 2020, Sweeney asked Spencer to unshackle Xbox free-to-play multiplayer from Xbox Live Gold subscriptions. Sweeney wanted the subscriptionless service to hit Xbox consoles on August 27th, the launch date of Fortnite Season 14, and several days after Epic planned to update the game with the payment system that started the lawsuit. While Microsoft didn't remove the subscription requirement on Epic's proposed schedule, it probably wouldn't be a stretch to assume that Sweeney's suggestion might have sown the idea of a subscription-free Fortnite future that's bloomed. Recently, 9to5Mac relayed emails and presentation documents from the Epic Games vs. Apple case that revealed Fortnite isn't the first time Apple has faced in-app purchase problems. In 2018, Netflix wanted to prevent new users from signing up for subscriptions directly in its iPhone app, and the company started the process with a simple focus test. This decision made Apple scramble to keep the in-app subscription purchases. According to court documents, Director of App Store Business Management at Apple, Carson Oliver, initially suggested punitive measures. But other Apple execs thought it would be better to place, say, Netflix in return for continued in-app purchase support. Ideas ranged from bundling Netflix with Apple services to letting Netflix determine which shows Apple TV could provide. Apple has seemingly never bent over backwards like this for another company. Despite Apple's attempts, Netflix patched out the ability to purchase and renew Netflix subscriptions in its iOS app. 
However, unlike Fortnite, Netflix is still available on Apple's app platform, with nary a punitive measure in sight. In the early days of the trial, several titans of the gaming industry were called upon to explain their business practices in full. Because of that, a highly redacted internal document from Nintendo found its way onto the internet. Although a good deal of the information in the dock is pretty standard stuff, the papers did reveal one interesting fact. Nintendo wants everyone to know that it will not work with the Yakuza. Now, let's take a look at who the scumbag is. Axios Gaming Stephen Tatillo noticed a section of the document titled Anti-Social Forces, which describes Nintendo's refusal to work with any parties that engage in violent crime. Moreover, Nintendo will terminate contracts with any developers or companies that are found to have any ties to organized crime. You'd be right to wonder why Nintendo decided to get so specific about this new rule, but it actually makes a good deal of sense. Back in the company's early days as a playing card manufacturer, Nintendo's products were often found to be tied to gambling and other underground activities. Since numbered playing cards were banned in Japan for quite some time, Nintendo's Hanafuda cards were literally the only game in town. Now, Nintendo wants to officially shed those unsavory ties and move forward as a family-friendly company. It's just so weird that it took the Epic vs. Apple case to bring Nintendo's anti-Yakuza stance to light. To say that Google Stadia has been struggling to find its niche since its November 2019 launch would be an understatement. As it turns out, though, things may be even worse for the cloud-based gaming service than gamers initially thought. According to a series of tweets courtesy of The Verge's Addy Robertson, Epic's lawyer asked Sweeney on May 4th, quote, Do you know whether or not Google Stadia is in existence today? In the same tweet, Robertson wrote, Judge objects that this would be confidential info. Lawyer says that's public reporting it was shut down. Interestingly enough, the judge's objection, which cited confidential info, seems to suggest that Sweeney might have insider information regarding Stadia's future, or lack thereof. VGC has noted, however, that the claim by Epic's lawyer that there has been public reporting of Stadia's shutdown has yet to be confirmed by news outlets. And this is where Tim Sweeney echoed a sentiment that may not exactly come as a surprise to gamers following the Stadia's, for lack of a better word, Epic flop. According to Robertson, Epic Games CEO alleged, My understanding is that after a public launch, Google Stadia has been very significantly scaled back. This information doesn't exactly come as a surprise, considering the near-constant string of troubles the Stadia has experienced since launch. According to Kotaku, Stadia shut down its internal game development studios in February, killing all projects that were in progress. Then, according to 9to5Google, Stadia product head John Justice departed from Google in early May. But hey, at least Stadia has a search bar now, right? Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite things are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.